going to make this presentation on behalf of the Health Information System team, as Nancy has said, uh, based at the regional office. Um, the, the main idea is just to introduce you to the basic principles of medical certification of cause of death. Uh, this being a part of the training series for MPDSR, we'll try to focus more on medical certification of cause of death for maternal uh, and child health. So we're just focusing on those more than uh, in other uh, aspects of the health system. Let's see. So uh, it is our expectation that by the end of this session, you will be able to define what a cause of death is. Uh, you'll be able to define what medical certification of cause of death is. Uh, you'll be able to explain why it is important to properly assign a cause of death. And also you'll be able to describe parts of the international medical certificate of cause of death. Uh, there are a number of key terms that we use uh, during medical certification of cause of death. So we hope that by the end of the session, you'll be able to mention this and also define the terms as well. And of course, we also expect that you should be able to successfully complete a medical certificate of cause of death using different scenarios that we are going to uh, sh show you. This really is the path. Then the, when somebody dies, you need to examine the date for you to come up with a proper cause of death. You need to examine the date. It's not always that you have to examine the date. Uh, if you have attended to the patient or the, the person who has died, you don't necessarily have to examine the dead in order to be able to say this is really what the cause of death is. But if you're doing an, an autopsy, of course, you have to examine the dead. Importantly, you need to formulate a sequence of events leading to death. We'll be returning to this point quite frequently. Formulating a sequence of events leading to death and identify only one underlying cause of death. There can only be one, one underlying cause of death, not two, not three, only one underlying cause of death. Then fill details of the sequence in a medical certificate of cause of death. And then uh, after that, you assign an international code. We'll be looking at ICD-11 coding in a separate training after this. If time allows today, we will, but most likely we will not be able to tackle that today, but we'll try to handle that uh, in another training. So today, let us just focus on medical certification of cause of death. So what is cause of death? Please feel free to uh, uh, interrupt me if you need any clarification or you can post any questions uh, in the chat. Hillary can be respond to some of the questions. The cause of death, according to WHO, refers to all those diseases, the morbid conditions or injuries, which either resulted in or contributed to death. And they also include circumstances surrounding them. We'll look at some of these to try to explain to you more what really this means. A definition of cause of death does not include symptoms, signs, and modes of dying, such as cardiorespiratory arrest and respiratory failure. For instance, you cannot say somebody died of fever. Fever is a symptom of something. You can't say somebody died of a headache. It is a sign of something. So, you have to be very clear about this, and we'll be coming to this also a lot more. And then, as I said, there can be several underlying causes that can be at either. Is, is somebody um, okay? So I think we didn't set the rules. So, if uh, you are not uh, going to raise a question or you're not uh, speaking, I kindly request you to mute your mic. 
mic and just mute your mic. So as I said, there can be several underlying causes of death. Okay. You can attribute as many, but you only choose one. Okay, hello make... colleagues, hello colleagues, please could you mute your phones, uh, your, your, yourselves when you are not the one presenting. If you are not the presenter, please mute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so as I was saying, several underlying causes of death can be attributed to death, but when you are filling the medical certificate of cause of death, you only have to choose one of them. Only one, you should choose and write only one. So selection of the underlying cause of death is based on the principles of preventing the primary or underlying cause of death if there was a public health intervention. Maybe let me explain this. The, criteria for choosing the underlying cause of death is based on the fact that the underlying cause of death are those that you know can have public health interventions to prevent them. I don't know whether this makes sense, but perhaps it will make sense as we see uh, more, I mean, we try to do some scenarios and so on. Okay? So, for instance, if somebody uh, died of a road traffic accident, died of multiple fractures following the road traffic accident, the underlying cause of death will be the road traffic accident because that's where your interventions will be. You will try to put your interventions in preventing road traffic accidents. If a mother died of, um, what do I say? Um, if a mother died of, say has severe uh, septic shock and it dies, and it is because of sepsis, your intervention is around preventing sepsis so that the person doesn't have to go through the process where the person gets septic shock. So we'll try to get some of these examples as, as, as we move along. Now, what is medical, sorry, so what is a medical certification of cause of death? So medical certification of cause of death is the process, is that feeling of the form. When you sit down to try to put all the information on why somebody has died, when you put it in a medical certificate, that's the that's a process which is referred to as the medical certification of cause of death. So it is the assignment of a cause of death by an authorized medically trained clinician who fully understands the clinical sequence or sequel of disease or injury that led to death. I think this we need to emphasize. The practice in so many uh, facilities, especially where you have consultants and so on, like where you have senior doctors is that uh, somebody feels and they bring to you, all that you do is you put your signature on a medical certificate of cause of death. You sign it, but you haven't known, actually you, you, you haven't seen the patient. And just because you're the senior doctor in the hospital, doesn't mean you have to endorse or sign any medical certificate of cause of death. So you should have participated ideally in the care of this patient before you sit down to certify a cause of death. So, it is critically important that you understand the clinical sequel, that events that led to death. Sequel by sequel, I mean the events that led to death. So the medical certificate of cause of death provides a cause of death statement. It, the cause of death statement, just the wording that you write in the format that is used on a death certificate, we'll see how, we'll see how this is done when we uh, do some exercises on completing a medical certificate of cause of death. So, sorry, I'm having challenges with. 
Just a moment. I don't know what this is for professional audio. I'm unable to hide something on my screen. It is blocking what is on my it is blocking my titles. Okay, we'll just continue. We can actually see your titles. Oh, you can see. I can <laughs> yeah, something is yeah, okay. Mine is blocked. If you want me so, to project for you, let me know. But uh, yeah, we can see it from here. Okay, excellent. So medical certification of cause of death is done by filling a medical certificate of cause of death. During that process of filling, the certifier, certifier is the person who is completing the medical certificate, provides a sequence of events leading to death. And this progresses in an ascending order from the underlying cause of death leading to the antecedent or intermediary causes of death, and then which leads to the immediate cause of death. The underlying cause of death is the disease or injury or poisoning that initiated the chain of events that led directly and eventually to death. That's the underlying cause of death. The intermediate or antecedent causes of death are these conditions that led to or pre precipitated the immediate cause of death, but occurs at the time between the underlying cause of death and the immediate cause of death. These intermediary causes might be very many. And when you are filling the medical certificate, you don't necessarily have to write all of them. You can pick the key ones. You can pick the key intermediate causes. If there are very many, you don't need to fill all of them. Actually, you will see somewhere down on the medical certificate, we have only provided four places for filling this, maximum of four. Of course, the country can decide to add more, but the, the international certificate has only provided four places to fill that. You will see that shortly. Then the immediate cause of death is the final disease or injury or complication resulting from the underlying cause of death that directly led to the death. We see a specific example of this. So let us look at the medical certificate. Maybe let me pause here. Is there any question so far up to this point? If you have any question you can ask, let's try to make this as interactive as possible. Anyone has any burning question? You can raise your hand using the raise yeah. your hand uh, button yeah. when the participants like. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Nakiova. Yes, Sarah Nakoba. Uh, thank you very much um, for, for, for this slide so far. Uh, looking at this situation in most of our health facilities, especially health center threes and health center fours, but even hospitals, good enough, uh, yeah, where we don't have a medical doctor. But uh, good enough in our reviews, we've noticed that most of the deaths are now happening at health center fours and hospitals. But even at health center fours, sometimes the doctor is not available most of the time to understand the sequence of events. Um, so I, I just hope we can be able to discuss how to handle that situation somewhere in our group work. Uh, yeah, I guess it's an, an issue. I don't know whether it's a problem in other regions, in other countries in the region. Absolutely. Actually, this is the biggest challenge. Uh, I mean, I mean, thank you. Actually, it's a very important question, extremely important question. It is, it is, it is a situation faced by all countries in the African region. We don't have one enough medical doctors to uh, do medical certification of cause of death. Even where we have medical doctors, in most cases, they are not interested. They don't know that they're supposed to. Uh, complete a medical certificate of cause of death. So it is a big challenge. Uh, previously, the guideline we had was that it should only be medical doctors who should do medical certification of cause of death. Because of the challenge that we have, we are actually thinking now that if someone is trained and once you have received the training and you understand the principles of medical certification of cause of death and you attended to the person that has died, you should be able to 
complete a medical certificate of cause of death. The other alternative also we're exploring is where death occurs and no one has the necessary skills to do medical certification of cause of death in a healthcare facility. There's another tool called a verbal autopsy tool, which is used for community reporting of death events. Actually, a nurse or even a clinic officer can use that tool instead of the medical certificate of cause of death. I think the most important thing is once you have received the training and you are confident that you can correctly assign a cause, the sequence of events and assign the cause of death, I think it's, it's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. Anybody should be able to do it, provided you have the interest and you have received the training. I hope that answers. So when, when you're discussing, uh, don't say, oh, okay, uh, uh, Benson said it's only doctors. No, we are open to that. Once you have received the training and you're confident, just go ahead and do the medical certificate of cause of death. And the other important thing that we emphasize is sometimes to get the sequence of events right can be quite challenging. We actually encourage healthcare facilities to form what we call death committees. This committee sits down to discuss before even you put any information on the medical certificate of cause of death. This committee sits to, down to discuss the sequence of events, what is possible? No, that sequel is important. Understanding the sequel is very important. What is possible? And then once they agree and the committee says, oh, I think this is the correct sequence of events, then that information is put in a medical certificate of cause of death.